So we're coming up on the end of May. We have a couple of weeks left. We're working with both the Tennessee Renaissance Festival now, we're in our second week, has already been finished. And uh, we're coming up on the final two weeks of Scarborough Fair, which is just outside of Dallas in Waxahachie. Um, the attendance has been really fantastic at these shows. I uh, wasn't really too sure where we'd be. We weren't sure if people would come out. We weren't sure if they would be interested in buying swords. Um, and what we found out is they're more interested than they've ever been before. 2019 was a very big year for us and we prepared for 2020 thinking that, you know, as many people did, that it was going to be a really, uh, a really big year across the board for these shows. Interest is extremely high in all things. Renaissance Festival, Nerd, Geek, everything is very, very high. And we thought that 2020 was going to be a big year. And obviously, for everyone, everywhere, 2020 really let us down. Um, in the beginning of 2021, we were apprehensive, but we felt like, you know, as the weather got warmer, things would happen. Well, they really have. Um, the shows are typically close to capacity, and our sales are basically double 2019. Uh, that's a big positive, obviously. We've got to make up an awful lot, and, you know, if you've watched this channel and you've watched our updates, we've invested a huge amount in infrastructure, both financially and in our labor. Um, keeping the guys going, keeping stuff going work-wise, and, and building for what we would we thought would be, you know, the future of the Renaissance Festivals here for 2021. Um, we built a tremendous amount of backstock with our dealers when they've sold it all. Last week, you know, I wake up uh, early Monday mornings, I wake up about 6 a.m. Uh, and check my email to see what my orders are going to be from the Renaissance Festivals during the week. And I woke up last week to an order that my dealer now calls a wish list instead of an order because he knows we can't fill something quite that big. But he wanted 90 swords from us. It's more than we can produce on such quick notice, obviously. There's only a couple of guys that you've seen, even though we have grown, we're still a little bit short-handed for something like that. But we ended up shipping 70 pieces, so um, it was pretty amazing. And, you know, we came into the second week of Tennessee uh, and what would be, I think, the seventh week of Scarborough Fair with this huge order going out to them and not really sure what we would see for last weekend. And the numbers were essentially the same. They were, they were huge numbers, double, double our sales you know, from 2019 that had been a record-setting year. Um, and that's true even with Scarborough Fair having had a tornado warning and closing the fair early. Still, still very good. And of course, we woke up Monday morning to some pretty significant, uh, some pretty significant orders, and the addition of the Georgia Renaissance Festival for a few weeks. Um, one of our friends uh, and dealers bought the old Sabersmith booth, so now we're selling at the Georgia Festival, which was a pretty unexpected turn of events. Um, we had considered buying that booth, but uh, it just felt too risky this early in the season. So somebody else decided that it was a worthwhile risk, and it definitely has proven to be because. Uh, it's a good show, and we, we've not really ever had a big presence at that show, uh, even though if you look way into the past of the Georgia Renaissance Festival, it was very tightly tied to Maryland, which is, of course, our home show. Next month, we'll be opening in Kentucky, and then uh, in the following month, when we get into July, the very, very beginning of July, we will be returning to the Bristol Renaissance Festival with the Royal Swordsmith, and that's uh, Steve Cohen, who uh, is one of the primary jousters of the show, is also a sword vendor there. So we'll be returning to that show. We haven't been there for a few years, um, but Bristol is an extremely, extremely nice show. Um, anytime that these shows have very high quality clothiers, we find that uh, if people are spending the money for tailored clothing for a Renaissance Festival, for their costumes, for their clothing, um, they buy swords. They buy swords, they buy daggers. So those shows tend to be um, very strong for us. So I have a great feeling for what we'll see at Bristol, which is in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And I think that opens on the, um, I think the 3rd of July is our, is our opening there. Um, right, right around there. And of course, um, Colorado Renaissance Festival will be opening uh, the following weekend, I think. Um, and Colorado is a, a big, big show for us. We'll be there again with Legacy Forge, the same way we are with about 50% of the shows that we do are with Legacy Forge. So we'll return to there. Um, the shop is uh, pretty streamlined now. It's a, it's a pretty big, different situation. I know that we've shown a lot 
out here in the forge area where we have got, uh, you know, we have a dirt floor and we've changed that and the equipment's all getting rebuilt. Um, the machine shop area, we have replaced a couple of machines and some of the machines that we brought in, um, you know, are from the 1970s and they needed some reworking. Uh, so not everything is running yet, but still, um, we found that even with the fewer people that we have working right now, that we're able to produce a considerable amount of product. And our backlog of, uh, of things that we already have heat treated and preparing to, uh, preparing to polish and grind um, is quite significant. I would imagine we probably have um, three or 400 swords in process right now, which is, which is pretty much where we like to be. We like to start the season with about a thousand overall pieces in process. Um, and then, you know, get as many to the heat treating level, which means we've already fullered them, um, they're already straightened, uh, and then they're heat treated, ground, and then polished. We keep them in a heat treated, you know, state so that we don't have to worry about rust, although um, considerably drier. And for the first time ever, the sanding and grinding room where the guys do so much of the hard work, we just put an air conditioner in on Monday. Uh, so that should make a, a considerable difference for us. Um, we're just going to keep cranking along. We'll see how the season goes. Like I said, we have two more weeks of Scarborough. Absolute record-breaking year for us. Uh, really fantastic to, to feel kind of everything come back to life, and not just come back to life, but show that our investment and our time and the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into the shop, you all have really made it, uh, really made it worthwhile for us, and we really appreciate you. We'll do these two more weekends before we move on to the Kentucky show. And um, I think they're going to be fantastic. I hope you guys can make it out and, uh, and either see us or see the dealers. You know, Legacy Forge, uh, Age of Chivalry. If you uh, go on Cult of Athena, you'll see you know a lot of product um, that's coming up. They actually have a huge amount of product uh, in boxes on the shelves they haven't been able to process and get on the website yet. So you should see a bunch more stuff uh, coming to Cult of Athena as well. Um, we're getting ready to ship a bunch more to Dark Age Creations in Calgary. Um, Jamie Ripley up there does a fantastic job and um, they do sword fight training and all kinds of things there. I'm not sure what their situation is right now with COVID. I know that Canada's a little behind the U.S. on some vaccinations, but uh, that appears to be opening up and uh, things catching up. So if you're in, up in Canada, or especially if you're in the Calgary area, definitely worthwhile uh, stopping at Dark Age Creations and check those guys out because they stock a lot of pieces for us and they, uh, you know, they're involved in archery and they have uh, HEMA classes and I mean it's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat experience there. Um, and we'll be, as I said, we'll be in Bristol where we haven't been for several years. That's in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, when we get into that show, Royal Swordsmith is near the Joust and um, should should be a, a great uh, great way to get started with them again. We uh, we really like those guys, Matt Monsoor and Steve Cohen, and all the rest of the guys, Jack Cohen, and everybody else there, uh, Savannah. They're they're really fantastic uh, people, and they put on a hell of a show. Definitely worth seeing. So uh, we hope to see you there, and we'll keep you updated. Thank you. Click the logo to subscribe, or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.